one aspect that I think is, um, is not working very well in this, um, in the current context is that uh, the problems of humanity have become more complex and more intertwined, more interrelated. But our thinking and our action is still organized in terms of specific topics that don't interact with each other. For instance, you have all the expertise in, in environmental conservation, climate change, and, and we see all the, all the uh, warnings about the depletion of species and of the capacity of the planet to uphold a human life. But this field, do not talk to uh, the nuclear, uh, the people who are making the nuclear policies. And we know that that has an, a, of course, a human impact, but also an environmental impact. When we're talking about the extinction of, of species and we need to bring that together with the, uh, the concept, with the understanding of the consequences of even a, a low yield tactical weapon. What does it imply for the extinction of species in that specific territory? Um, of course, we, we have the other, the other field of the emerging technologies and the combination of um, the, see the practical uh, challenges that result from the, the emerging technologies and the technologies that we have of the 20th century. And so we have at this moment, a great challenge uh, that is being identified by the experts in terms of uh, managing uh, nuclear weapons as a result of the 20th century with, um, all, with all the challenges of the di digital age, meaning and including uh, the, the risks that come with the automation uh, artificial in the application of artificial intelligence systems or uh, programs to the management or the to con uh, uh, command and control processes of the management of nuclear weapons. So uh, what we see is a need, and I would point that out also to Abolition uh, 2000, the need to bring everybody on board and to look at uh, every single problem from all the dimensions that this problem has and see how we uh, bring together the instruments that, are, that have been developed for one field and the instruments that have been developed for uh, the other fields and bring them together to, to have action that is more realistic and is more focused because um, as I said, for people who come from non-nuclear states, it is still very striking to see and to hear nuclear um, specialists and experts in nuclear weapons just continue on the same logic that we have had for the same for the last 70 years. You know, when I I went to work at the global uh, level, at the global uh, diplomatic field, the issue of, of um, women participation in um, negotiations, especially of those uh, traditionally male dominated areas such as security or nuclear weapons was not so salient as it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, 2014, for instance, when I arrived at the UN, I did not find that saliency. I think this, um, this topic has, has been gaining uh, not only saliency, but also importance because we now see and we have um, evidence of what women leadership, leadership bring, brings about. So the, the participation of women is an, is an issue of, of conviction, it's an issue of um, uh, justice, and it's, it's a rational issue because um, we know that uh, we human beings have different uh, conditions and different approaches to, to problems and different skill sets of skills. Just, it just makes sense that um, all negotiations are as, um, uh, as representative of that uh, reality of the humankind as possible. Um, 
what we are seeing with this, uh, this moment is that women uh, bring more, not only different views to the same problems, but also we tend to innovate in the way in which we work. And the way in which we work also determines the results and the outcomes. I remember this phrase that is attributed to Albert Einstein that we cannot solve the problems using the same mentality that created them. So to have a, um, an open mind towards innovating in approaches and working methods, I think that does render results in terms of what we can achieve and in having more sustainable responses. So women's participation is, is necessary and as is the participation of all segments of, of society. When we develop interventions and design dialogue and political processes, we also have to take those things into consideration. But it is obvious that the, uh, the current structure of global governance was designed after the world of 19, 1945. What we need to um, discuss and reflect upon is how how you can go about changing that, introducing changes because revolutions um, have the challenge of sustainability. Any any intervention that you design, you have to design in terms of um, of achieving sustainability of the changes or the evolutions. Um, so. Um, I think at this moment when we are seeing and undergoing so much structural change in the world and in the global um, society overall, we have to advance discussion and reflection. But the process of change, actual change at the institutional level that require the political will to give up powerful positions that were gained um, 70 years ago, that is going to be very difficult. So what we see in other periods in history in which uh, we needed to change structures was that there was a big discussion, there were big reflections on one topic and the, um, uh, the influence of the changing mentality was in place when the structures did change for other reasons. Let us uh, think about, for instance, the issue of colonialism. There was already a norm developing a, a, towards the, um, the right of self-determination and against colonialism, um, already uh, forging when, after the Second World War, the, uh, basically the European powers uh, did not have the same uh, conditions to maintain the, the, the colonial structures of the past. And so you, we saw that a change in power structure is always uh, interacted with change of mentality. Change of mentality itself, by itself, um, is not the only uh, driver of change, but uh, they interact among each other, and when when um, actually actual things change on the ground, they change pretty much towards the direction that the uh, overall mentality and reflection uh, has been identifying. So um, we think that um, in reflecting upon how we can adapt the global governance structure to the current reality of the world, I think there is much more reflection that we need to do. We have some indications about where we are going, but we at the same time have many pressing problems for humanity, including of course that of uh, the existential threats such as climate change and nuclear weapons.